I'm switching to our reporter, Yoav Evan, calling out from the Ministry of Health for the Israeli citizen to donate their dam, their blood. Huge lineups of Israeli citizens coming over to donate blood. They actually had to stop the collection, there's too many people that came to donate. Now they are uh, getting uh, the operation together to get ready to accept uh, more citizens to come and donate blood. It's a good thing, it's uh, important for the injured people and it shows uh, how the people of Israel are coming together in this difficult times. <coughs> calling to the citizen to donate blood. <coughs> Switching to another reporter at, Stero, at Ofakim. Also in Ofakim there is a police station that is uh, under fire. There. They are now uh, reporting 100 meters away from the police station. It's been 16 hours that in the city of Israel, four terrorists holding, hiding into in an apartment building 20 meters away from them. Inside the town of Ofakim, more than 16 hours, all the special units are here, shop shooters, everything that is needed. And we managed this situation with four terrorists still in that apartment, and there's civilians around that area. Many hours ago, they're shooting away, shooting from that apartment. Uh, a grenade was thrown out. Those terrorists are equipped with weapons. Let's, let's make it clear. It's not a situation inside the police station, but it's a hostage situation that we we're reporting about hours ago and we're still not able to resolve this situation. Yes, more than 16 hours, more than 16 hours that all the citizens of Ofakim need to be inside their homes without knowing whether there are still terrorists in their city, they've been told to stay inside their apartment, not getting out. And the reason is because when this situation develops at 7.15 in the morning, there's a lot of terrorists that came into this town and start shooting on civilians. And because of the uh, the alarms from the missile attack alarms, a lot of the citizens went down to the bomb shelters and then they, they found the terrorists in the streets and got injured by them. It's still not clear if there's still additional terrorists in that area, in the town, but we know for sure there's four terrorists with hostages in one of the apartments 20 minutes from here and it's a developing story. How, how so many terrorists were able to get into this town of Afakim, it's 30 km kilometers away from the Gaza border. Still a lot of questions, with a lot of people that got injured there. We're going to uh, now talk over the phone with a, a major uh, in reserve in the army that was able to rescue his son and his granddaughters. I received a message from my son and his kids and they told me that they have terrorists close to their homes and they're surrounded. I told him, stay in a safe room, Mamad, and be quiet. When we started a journey down south with my wife, it was hard to get to his town. The roads were closed in many areas, with uh, 
bodies lying on the road. And somehow, around noon, he was able to join some of the army forces. And they stormed forward towards the terrorists. Some people got injured. He gave uh, one of the jeep, army jeep to his wife and, and continued down south to Nahal Oz to con continue with the other army forces and, and finally he was able to meet his son Did you get to their house and you knocked on the door? You came to rescue them? Yes, he opened the window of the safe room, they were there quietly. You know, able to see his son and his granddaughter and rescued him. A number of terrorists got killed on the way. Now we're going to start evacuate the rest of the civilians there. So they're still there in Nachalos, one of the villages. In the house where your son and granddaughters were, were the terrorists there? In the house or around the area? Yes, there were five terrorists around the house. Those terrorists were shooting on the house, on their house, on the cars. There's some houses that went inside and, and robbed those houses. How were how you able to get them out when there's so many terrorists around? First of all, the excellent forces of the special forces, parachuters of the army, we all fought together, side by side. <laughs> able to fight down and start evacuating the civilians outside of the outside of the town. That's it. We are in a state of war. We are going to win this war. What is your impression from what you saw? It looks like it's like the Yom Kippur War. There's many things that we need to check, but now we need to win. We need to destroy Hamas. Gaza will need to pay a price. We need to bite our lips and win this war. There's no other way. Today I saved my family and on the way I also help other, other people there in, in the same town. We are happy. We are happy to hear that your story was ended in a happy ending. There's no, it's not happiness but determination. And we have to win this war. We have to win. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for joining us. It's an amazing story. We have to provide two minutes to machine bed forces, the special forces of Israel are fighting into those in towns and villages, going door to door, and they're focusing on finishing and killing the terrorists all over those villages and towns around Gaza where the terrorists infiltrated. And at the beginning of the invasion, there's many people that got kidnapped, became hostage and get pulled into Gaza and a lot of hard to see images of women, children, old people that got kidnapped by the Hamas. And these are some of the images. 
From, uh, they take the soldiers out of their tank. This is how the soldiers have uh, filmed the beginning of the attack. Everyone was in the tank was kidnapped. Everyone was in the tank was kidnapped a short while ago. But the uh, the Hamas forces. These are images of the Hamas terrorists showing how they kidnap the soldiers. Now, the Hamas, they're recording those very tough moments. This is a Hamas bulldozer basically breaking through the border. Throughout all the day, we saw these images where the border was completely open. And hostages are being led into the Gaza Strip. The military and civilian cars being transporting those hostages, Israeli citizens and soldiers. They kidnapped us, they kidnapped us, they're taking us hostages. Are they going to kill us? I don't know. They told us not. They told us not. They told us not. It's a child's voice. It's still not known how many soldiers and citizens have been kidnapped into Gaza. They said that they have a few tens. No one's gonna hurt you. No one's gonna hurt you. So you know that we are humane. Take her over there and protect her. Take her over there and keep her alive. These are your kids? Yeah, these are my kids. They take her outside of her village. There's no protection, there's no safe room, there's no other protection. Be careful. Be careful on them, be careful, don't injure them. We're getting out now. We're just crossing the border now. It's recording after editing. It's very hard to watch, so they, we blur the images. Moshe Or was looking. His family members that were in the outdoor party and these images. These images are all over social media. What happened? This morning I heard all the rumors. The one, he went to the telegram, the social media, and he couldn't believe what he was able to see. He saw his brother and Noah, his girlfriend. These are the Hamas leaders in Lebanon. Ania, Mashal, Auri, and others. They are overseas, and Ania, the leaders of the Hamas, is threatening that the attack is going to be even wider, not only in Gaza but also West Bank. In the afternoon, the Air Force is attacking military targets in Gaza. A state of emergency has been declared all over Gaza. According to the reporting, there's more than 160 uh, dead people due to the Air Force strikes. And there's more situation. Right now, a short moment ago, a boat, a terrorist boat, was trying to infiltrate to, to the ocean, to Zikin Beach. The military forces identified them and shot, again, and shot them down. But we can see that there's still attempts of terrorists to infiltrate from all directions, this time from, from the sea. At this time, the military was able to stop them. But this situation adds to additional situations that are still continuing to happen with hostages in, the, in Kibbutz Beri, with the police station in Zderot, including the family in Ofakim, and additional towns around Gaza, Israeli towns around Gaza, but the military, Israeli military is still 
didn't achieve full control. There are 10 villages and towns that were completely cleared from all terrorists, but there's still many villages that are still uh, fights are, are still on the way between IDF and terrorists. There's ma a massive amount of forces, security forces in those areas, and they're acting there, they're trying to get there. We hope that screening of those villages are going to end up soon, and we can declare that many of these towns are now clear of terrorists. Some rewards from you from this very terrible day. Dani, in Nativa Asara, another town by Gaza, identified 17 people that murdered there. One missile was shot against a building, a terrorist shot a missile on one of the buildings there, and Civilians got died, died there from the collapse of the building, including old people. From 9 in the morning, this is one of the hardest days of reporting death. I had in my career, there's going to be many questions about the failures, and, and there's going to be a lot of questions, who is at fault, and why we got surprised. But this is what happened in the future. Currently, we're fighting. The, the fight still continues. And we're going to face many difficult days in front of us with very, very difficult, day, uh, difficult images and hard questions. But currently, we're all supporting security forces and citizens around the Gaza Strip. And we're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to continue to stay strong despite the numbers, despite the images and the very difficult reports. And thank you for all the teams that are reporting all across the evening.